So here we go with another nice short chapter, number 20 or chapter 21, acid-base balance. So um, acid-base balance is really talking about pH. So pH is a number that we use to indicate the concentration of hydrogen ions in a fluid. So a neutral pH would be 7. So neutral, that would be like water. Water is an example of a perfect 7. Anything that's higher than 7 is considered alkaline or basic. It's a basic solution. Anything that's less than 7 is considered acidic. So if 7 is, is neutral, we go down um, to 0 or up to 14. So normally our blood, I believe I mentioned this before, but blood has a pH of 7.35 to 7.45. So that's what our body wants to maintain itself at in order to maintain homeostasis. Here's just a picture to help those of you who are visual learners. Um, so distilled um, water is right here at 7. Blood is just a hair more basic than that. And you can see things that go up and are acidic. Hydrochloric acid at zero is very, very acidic. And notice that it has more, it's pink here, it has more hydrogen, right? So um, you can see here with some of the stuff that we eat. And then if you go in this direction, You can see that these are not really things that we eat. I guess we do eat up to baking soda. They're not, not directly used as a product in what we eat. Um, but a lot of these are cleaning products. Um, and these don't have a high hydrogen concentration. They have a high hydroxide concentration, which is that OH combination. So this is basic or alkaline, and this is acidic. So the pH homeostatic mechanism, there are three coordinated homeostatic mechanisms that act to maintain the normal pH of the body fluid. And that's to prevent the pH from swinging either direction when you either have acids or bases present in your body. So um, there is a chemical control level of pH, so the chemical control mechanism, and that's based on a buffering system, which is in your blood, so your red blood cells or your body fluids, and that can act immediately. There's also a physiological pH control mechanism, and that's going to change your pH regulators by a change in respiratory rate, um, and that changes your blood CO2 level, and that can act within a few minutes. Now, why it changes your blood CO2 level is because CO2 is um, is very acidic, or, or you don't need to know the details and why or how, but it's acidic. Um, so if you're acidic, you can breathe off more CO2, which takes a few minutes to do, but that can help correct your pH as well. Um, so changes in your pH can, um, also be regulated by your kidneys because your kidneys can excrete um, more acid or less acid, but that takes a few hours to work. So you have the stuff in your circulation is one, and remember that acts instantly. Your respiratory, you can breathe off CO2, and that takes a few minutes, or your kidneys, and that can take a few hours. So buffers, buffers by, by definition are substances that prevent a sharp change in the pH of a fluid when an acid or base is added to it. So fixed acids are buffered mainly by sodium bicarbonate. Um, so sodium bicarbonate is a substance that we can make in our bodies and we make it in our kidneys to help buffer um, any high amounts of acid. So they kind of cancel each other out. An acid plus a base equals equals an, a neutralized substance. So any changes in the blood that are produced by the buffering of these fixed acid in the tissue capillaries. Um, so the amount of um, 
carbonic acid, so that's really what you get when you get CO2. The reason why it's acid is that it can become this carbonic acid by adding water to it, and that is acidic. So the H concentration increases slightly, which makes your pH drop down a little bit. So if you have more hydrogen, it makes it more acidic. So basically what happens is that if I have a, an acid, or if I have a base, sorry, that would be the base, and an acid, I will always get when I combine them a salt and a water. So base plus acid equals salt plus water. Both of these, though, are neutralized. Now, salt does not always mean Na, even though Na is sodium. Salt is just kind of like a, a term used to describe a particular molecular combination. But we're going to talk a little bit about um, the specifics in controlling pH. So there's a respiratory mechanism of pH control. And that would be that your respirations can remove some CO2 from your blood so that it doesn't become an acid. And what that does is that it increases your pH. So remember, an increase in pH makes it more alkalotic, more basic. Um, and your respiratory control centers in your brainstem react to a dropping pH or a high CO2 level, so it reacts to that high CO2 or a more acidic pH to tell you to breathe, um, to breathe more, to tell you to breathe off that CO2 to bring your, um, your pH back into a normal range. But then on the other end of the spectrum, if your pH is high, if you're alkalotic, it's going to tell your respiratory rate to slow down so that you hold on to that CO2 to then make your blood a little bit more acidic to bring it back into that homeostasis, what it wants for the pH, which is 7.35 to 7.45. So the urinary mechanism of pH control. Um, your kidneys are really your body's most effective regulator in blood pH. And that's because normally urine is very acidic. And that's because it secretes hydrogen ions and ammonia, which is also acidic, um, into the urine from blood. And it exchanges it for sodium bicarb, which is a base. Um, and that gets reabsorbed into the blood. So it takes that ammonia um, and can, can kind of trade it off. So it's going to trade the, the acid for the base to help maintain that pH. And it can do it more or less based on what the body needs. So the pH in your urine that you excrete can really change a lot based on what your body pHs and what your body is trying to maintain. So that pH of 3.5 to 4.5. So for pH imbalances, you can have either acidosis or alkalosis. Acidosis means that your body is um, acidic. Your pH is low. Alkalosis means that your body is alkalotic or your pH is high. Um, and there are two different kinds or two different categories that it will fall into. Um, so disturbances in this acid-base balance depend on the, the quantities of each one. So how much acid versus how much base. And the body then regulates it based on the buffering systems. So your two major buffering systems for more long term are your kidneys or your blood. So those are your two categories. And if one of them doesn't work correctly, you can have an acid or base imbalance because one of them isn't working to pull their share of the compensation. So you can have a metabolic disturbance um, that um, affects the sodium bicarb level um, in the blood. So metabolic means that it's kidney, 
So if I have a metabolic acidosis, it means that my kidneys aren't working very well. So they aren't working to get rid of the acid and give me base in exchange. So now my acid is high. And, but I could also have them working too much. So something's wrong and they're working too much. And that can cause a metabolic alkalosis because they're taking out too much of the acid and replacing it with too much of the base. So just to make this even more complicated, <clears throat> um, so if you, you can have uncompensated and compensated. Um, so here we're talking about the, the metabolic part. So uncompensated means that I have a high bicarb, um, a high or low bicarb basic, basic based on if it's a metabolic acidosis or a metabolic alkalosis. So if it's a metabolic alkalosis, my bicarb is high. If it's a metabolic acidosis, my bicarb is low. But what happens is that my carbon dioxide is still normal. But I can compensate. My body can say, you are producing too much bicarb. You're now alkalotic. So the sensors in my brain stem that tell me normally like oh this is off with your ph breathe faster or slower are still working even though maybe my kidneys aren't so they would sense and say okay so there's too much bicarb you are too alkalotic we are going to now slow down our breathing to hold on to more of that carbon dioxide because carbon dioxide can be made into an acid so that's going to help correct your high level of bicarb. And that's what we call compensated. So compensated is when the other um, mechanism, so either kidneys or lungs, so it's your two mechanism, is trying to work to correct it. So if I, I look at somebody where both their bicarb and their carbon dioxide are off, I know that it's compensated. If I look at somebody and it's one or the other that's off, they're uncompensated. So then we can do the same by looking at respiratory. So you can have um, respiratory alkalosis. So that means that you have too much CO2 or, you, or respiratory acidosis, sorry. I know it's too many words it sound like, right? Respiratory acidosis means you have too much CO2. Respiratory alkalosis means you have too little CO2. So this means either I'm breathing too fast, alkalosis, or I'm breathing too slow, acidosis. So if it's uncompensated, my carbon dioxide will either be high or low based on if I'm breathing too fast or too slow, but my bicarb level is normal. It becomes compensated when the sensors um, in my kidney is going to say, oh, they, we are too acidic. I need to release more bicarb because our, our body pH is too low. So your body is trying to compensate for the fact that one of those systems isn't working and ignore the fact that's supposed to say respiratory. So ignore the fact that it's, this is metabolic. Um, and you don't need to worry about that because we just explained that. So that brings us to the end of this nice, short, sweet chapter.